the mysterious death in Turkey of this Saudi Arabian prominent journalist, Khashoggi. Uh, and this has been breathlessly covered for the last week. I have not really covered it other than the fact to say that I didn't know the uh, full details because no one did. But now a very, very clear picture has emerged. The media has hyped it up like it's a million people got killed or something. I think it's terrible it happened. But the media hyping it and then them blaming Trump for it and saying he's not standing up for journalists and trying to derail the peace plans we have with Saudi Arabia has everything to do with Obama and the entire Iran deal uh, that the deep state has been trying to keep going. And so I talked to multiple sources over the weekend, and then I talked to one of the sources you've heard on the air before, who has a lot of amazing connections that I've confirmed, Zach, and he uh, actually met with some generals and folks uh, in the last uh, 24 hours uh, to, to, to try to find out more. And a very, very clear picture has emerged of this being a false flag to basically draw Saudi Arabia in uh, and to basically then destabilize Saudi Arabia and have a coup in the Saudi kingdom and put something even far worse in uh, so this is this has Iran and Obama and of course Hillary written all over it trying to kill the peace plans that Trump has been trying to develop now that ties in with the big news of course uh, that Trump gave a interview to 60 Minutes uh, where he said that Mattis Secretary of Defense is on his way out and that uh, Mattis is basically a Democrat but that he's a great guy and I, I've been hearing for a long time that Mattis is a double dealer from really smart people, but I've stayed out of it. So I'm not going to get into White House intrigue. As long as the agenda of making America great again continues, and as long as we're restoring this republic to the people's control and the republic's control, and not under globalist control, uh, I'm not like some Washington, Washingtonian type swamp creature bidding for influence and bidding for control and bidding for my click getting into the White House. Sycophantically off the Democrats. Republicans do. I'm here in Texas trying to promote Americana and its restoration. And I'm trying to do the best job I can to do that. And that's why we're targeted like no one else by the deep state uh, to be shut down. And, and that's why they have pulled out the stops on every level to destroy us because of what we're promoting. Americana and free market versus globalism. And that's why I cannot stress enough as we begin this live radio slash TV program if you're listening on local radio or watching on local TV or, or, or watching at Infowars.com uh, forward slash show or a lot of websites embed the player that we have on the front page to their sites or, or they email that to friends and family and say, hey, here's the forbidden show. Here's what they don't want you to see. Now, what does that mean? If they're really afraid of the information we're covering, then obviously it's the most effective information because it's true. And so if they're trying to suppress it, our enemies... What do we want to do? We want to promote it. And I know everybody gets that. But they are moving to just like I'm a Jew in Nazi Germany in a ghetto that can't buy or sell. They are moving. And as I told everybody hundreds and hundreds of times the last six weeks since I got deplatformed everywhere, next up is your veterans group or your church or your conservative group or your Christian group. Facebook has banned thousands and thousands and thousands, so has Twitter, of conservative and libertarian and Christian groups the last few months. But now it's thousands a day since Thursday, purging basically everyone. So they try to get everybody to, to be conditioned and, and follow along with their globalism or, or, or they'd be shut down. Uh, but now they're just going ahead and, and, and deleting everybody. Before they would try to just condition you and bully you into submitting or they'd take you down. Now, they're just taking everybody down, period, with 23 days out from this historic election. Left's crazy barometer is mind-numbing. So let's take a look at what has happened in just a couple of weeks. Rand Paul recently warned on WHAS's Leland Conway show. This is dangerous. I think, I, I think what people need to realize that uh, when people like Cory Booker say, get up in their face, he, he may think that that's okay, but what he doesn't realize is that for about every thousand person that might want to get up in your face, one of them is going to be unstable enough to commit violence. We don't want to encourage them. We have to somehow ratchet it down and say we're not encouraging that violence is ever okay, ever a reason for or a means for trying to resolve things. 
I feel that there's going to be an assassination. I really worry that someone is going to be killed and uh, that those who are ratcheting up the, the, the conversation, those who are ratcheting up saying get in their face, they have to realize that they bear some responsibility if this elevates to violence. While Michael Savage took a more hands-on and immediate approach. Do you believe Antifa should be deemed a terrorist, a domestic terrorist organization? I think they have declared themselves to be a, a terrorist organization. Uh, last week we saw uh, on the Drudge Report a link where they claimed that they were going to pretend during the day that they were for all the people, but at night they were going to engage in activities of assassination towards their political enemies, meaning all those who are not communists and uh, leftists of any kind. Uh, I'm talking assassination. This went out from Antifa people. They're absolutely domestic terrorist group. What else would anyone call them? So what what should the attorney general, what should the FBI, what should they do about that? Well, if you're in a terrorist organization, we have a Department of Homeland Security, don't we? If you have a, a group within the United States that says they're going to assassinate political enemies, you round up the leadership and arrest them. What else do you do? Wait for them to kill people? Meanwhile, Trump derangement syndrome and the fast approaching midterms sent the left into a bloodthirsty rampage. On the heels of the Kavanaugh national disgrace, the Democratic staffer accused of leaking personal details of GOP lawmakers during the Kavanaugh hearings was ordered held without bond on Tuesday. Additionally, investigators said they found cocaine and methamphetamine during a search and claimed Costco may have been under the influence when, according to them, he used his credentials to dox several lawmakers by leaking their personal addresses and phone numbers. And Maxine Waters continued to manipulate the Democratic base while denying any sense of wrongdoing. We're not going to allow them to take this false message that they're trying to carry to the American people, trying to make them believe that we're an angry mob. We're not going to let them get away with that. You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. That's why I believe if we are fortunate enough to win back the House and or the Senate, that's when civility can start again. But until then, the only thing that the Republicans seem to recognize and respect is strength. What do you think of that? Well, I like that. And we are not saying we're going to kill anybody, we're going to hit anybody, or we're going to cause anybody any harm. That's a lie. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Hillary Clinton and Eric Fast and Furious Holder lit a fuse so dangerous they will have to be held accountable for the uncertain chaos ahead. Meanwhile, that chaos is unfolding. FBI agents today continued searching a home just north of New York City where yesterday they discovered a 200-pound bomb. Prosecutors say Paul Rosenfeld planned to detonate that bomb in Washington, D.C. on Election Day. He allegedly wanted to kill himself and draw attention to his political beliefs. But Michelle says that, you know, when they go low, we go high. No. No. When they go low, we kick them. That's what this new Democratic Party is about. The National Review asks, who will save the Democrats from their leaders? Writing, when they go low, that's where they are sure to find Eric Holder. Sometimes, the former attorney general is helping a Democratic president commute the sentences of hard left terrorists whose only regret was failure to shoot it out against police who interrupted another bombing spree in their war against the United States. But if there is anyone who knows about going low, it is Mr. Holder. He is, after all, the first attorney general in American history to be held in contempt of Congress. Antifa is following Hillary and Holder's advice to the letter, writing, Our attack is merely a beginning. We are not passive, we are not civil, and we will not apologize. Those of good conscience and clear mind know this state of oppression cannot remain. The U.S. fascist political system is one of the most savage institutions in history, and we will combat it relentlessly until all are free of American barbarism. This after vandalizing the New York City GOP headquarters. Hey, Democrats, we get it. You hate America and everyone enjoying its freedoms or what's left of them. John Bound reporting. We are not in normal territory. Now, uh, most of you are saying, yeah, tell us the sky's blue, dude. 
and the grass is green and the bluebirds are blue and the Santa Claus wears a red and white outfit with black boots. We know. I know you know. But are you responding to the oppression and the tyranny by resisting it and standing up to it or are you just getting used to it? Because studying psychological warfare, it was always right there in front of me how they were hitting us. How these multinational globalists, these soulless corporate groups working with Communist China, how they were operating. But it wasn't until they were flying me first class to be on The View. And I say that because I was in first class with the uh, one of the heads of one of the biggest banks in the U.S. And he said, we have an off-record conversation. Just don't say my name, but I want you to know something. You'll never beat us because the public will adapt and overcome to our system. They won't adapt and overcome it by stopping it. They will put up with it. They will learn to go along with it. As long as we take it away from you slowly, as long as we kill you softly, you'll never know. And he laughed at me. Yeah, maybe we should play the scene from Network. But let's cue that up and we'll do that in a minute. You have meddled with the tidal forces of nature, Mr. Peel, and you will atone. But see, they're meddling with the tidal forces of nature, trying to end the family, trying to end free market, trying to end prosperity, trying to end upward mobility. You know, I think President Trump has made a mistake when he said he wouldn't go see first man because somebody told him it didn't have the planting of the flag. It, it, it does have the flag in it. And it's a powerful moment, but you know Trump made the fact that they don't make a huge issue out of it, you know, a problem for him, which I think is fine. It points it out, but the movie itself gives you an idea of what historically happened. It's very good. I saw it today with my wife and all the steps that went into it versus the modern system where we're building a world not about empowering humanity, not about projecting humanity into the stars, but about capturing the human mind and the human biological system and basically making it obsolete we are in the throes of a anti-human revolution directed by the globalist and that's why the human man space program has been ended uh is because they don't want that idea of wild wild west in the stars and humanity being on some great quest they don't want us looking down and seeing how small the planet is they want you in a smartphone in a computer screen in a virtual reality created by the big tech companies in hollywood so it's a very good wholesome pro family pro male energy uh movie very very well done uh, it's it's long two hours 18 minutes but i can only say bravo and it's very historically accurate And so I would tell the president, get behind the movie, because compared to the rest of the poison that comes out of Hollywood, it is a very, very good thing. And, you know, that's another thing. I've offered a million dollars for anybody that can find video where I say, get your battle rifles ready and attack the media. It doesn't exist. Unedited. Remember, they banned me off Twitter for that the first time. And it was on every channel in the country. Jones says, get rifles, kill the press. And then they use the New York Times, the Washington Post with battle rifles, in quotes, and then media from 20 minutes later. I said, if it comes to your house, you're a member of Congress, if you've been doxxed as federal law enforcement, if they've exposed your location, which they're doing, and they say they're going to come to your house like Congressman Scalise was shot and kill you. I said, if you've been doxxed, they may really come after you before the election or after. You better have your own protection, your battle rifle ready. That turns into kill the media. One million dollars, if you can find me saying that. You can't. Even George Soros' Media Matters shows a clip that doesn't even show me saying that, but they go with the battle rifles quote, but the other words by it don't have quotes by it. But that's what they send to Apple and Google and, you know, to PayPal and say, you've got a guy on there saying, kill the media. Total hoax. I'll also offer this, a million dollars if you can show me saying we never went to the moon. It isn't true. A million dollars if you can show me saying there are Martian slave children, human slaves on Mars. Never said that. 
Never came out of my mouth. I said I disagreed with that. Somebody else said. But see, they don't show the quotes because they're defrauding you. That's what they think of you. One million dollars, I say we didn't go to the moon. One million dollars, I said, use battle rifles and kill the press or attack the press. One million dollars that I said there are human slaves on Mars. And everybody sees that about me everywhere. That's them executing lies against you because here's the key to everything. Understanding what we've done to InfoWars is the key to what's going to come next. As I warned you and is now happening with thousands of conservative sites banned the last four days. Michelle Malkin's Facebook, you name it. It's all going away. Millions of followers per page. Independent filmmakers, anti-war liberals, they're being banned too. Just anybody who's anti-establishment. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. So let's get back to what I was focusing on here. Because this is the, this is the answer to all of it. We had a huge victory getting Trump in. Two years later, or 23 months later after his election, not even a swearing in. It's like 24 months till his swearing in. Less than two years after he got elected, was just president-elect. You have the economy and so many things coming back. And so this victory is so beautiful and so good, they have to change the subject and build these straw men about Trump that he's a racist and says the N-word. No video, no audio, no proof. It was on Saturday Night Live last night. or that I've done and said all these wild things because they can't deal with the reality. And so instead, they just try to overthrow reality and demonize anybody that stands up for what's right or what's true. So they're rewriting history. And they're doing it so that we can't have a victory that Trump got in, so that we lower our morale. And so that instead of people going, wow, InfoWars as an audience of activists, rebooted Americana and built the platform for Trump to get in. Instead of having that victory going, wow, look what we did, they changed the subject into a bunch of made-up stuff we never did and then make us fight for our very existence because they don't want to have to contend with us into the future. And uh, the leftists attacked them yet again and the media spun it that, well, there was just a big brawl. Bear spray, bloody brawls at Patriot Pair, uh, Prayer, Law and Order March in Portland. So next segment, we'll have some of that video and some of that uh, audio uh, coming up for radio and TV listeners. And as I told you, we will get into what's really going on with the whole Saudi Arabia thing that's blown up over the death of this journalist and what the high-level sources and, and, and others believe is really going on. Now, let me pull back here from the table real quick and uh, get into something that's really central to what we're facing with 23 days out from this incredible midterm election. It is known that under the globalist model, the Western power elite made a deal with communist China to give them control of the world's resources and industrial might, but that the United States would have control over military might. But that's how they got a lot of, a lot of academics and other people on board, believing they were really building this big world government, then it wasn't a CHICOM double cross. But in the last six years, China double crossed the West, which they were meant to do by the globalists, and our own military almost went into revolt mode over aiding the Arab Spring to have them take over Africa and the Middle East. And then to let China take over the rest of the world militarily. After the U.S. had been bankrupted and basically brought down to its knees. And yeah, there's Bloomberg. China is low-key taking over the world. And that means authoritarianism. That means people that sell their political dissidents' organs. That means people that give big mega corporations total tax exemption to be based there so that no one else can compete with them. 
They're the folks putting spy chips in all the major devices made in China with Apple and others, full acknowledgement. They're the ones working with Google. Oh, I saw this on Friday, and I never got to it. Will you guys print that for me, too? The uh, article, it was just a headline about Google Head says that there's a lot of benefits to censored Chinese search engine and promotes a censored search engine to Congress, saying to them, you're the ruling class. This could really help you take control. See, they really mean business. Yeah, there it is. Google CEO tells senators that censored Chinese search engine could provide broad benefits. Did you, did you hear that? That's like selling Zyklon B to Hitler in 1944 and saying it has broad benefits. Or maybe selling uh, lighter fluid to the KKK so they can burn crosses. I mean, you know, I don't even think I have words at this point. It's almost obscene to even be on air talking about this and just acting normal about it. Because it's this weird paradox. It almost makes it no big deal and like it's the rest of the media to just talk about this. Like, oh, this has as much importance as O.J. Simpson or as much importance as uh, some politician when it doesn't. I mean, this isn't just your normal hype. This is the real world. This is our own elite sold us out to the most murderous authoritarian dictatorship the world's ever seen. And you've got thousands of conservative sites being purged off Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter a day. And now they don't even say it's for fake news or because you violated our terms. They say, we just say you're spam, totally subjective term, and we remove you. And there is one one thousandth. That's probably conservative. There's almost no coverage of NRA Facebook sites and conservative newspaper sites and conservative talk show host sites. And like I said, Michelle Malkin, just you name it, Tucker Carlson fan sites. They're all being removed. And the reason is because we felt like it. And Facebook and Twitter and Google and YouTube all meet at Twitter headquarters every week to decide who they're going to target and who they're going to take down. And it's not even a news item. It's not even an issue. It doesn't even make the radar screen. You know, what did I tell everybody six weeks ago? And most people got it, but a lot of talk show hosts didn't. I said, you know, when they're done deplatforming me everywhere, they're going to go after the payment processors then and, and, and harass companies until they say that if I owned a gas station, I couldn't have credit card processing. That They're going to say, you can't come buy products from me and give me money for a product. They're literally getting in front of the services and saying, we're going to target every group out there. We're going to look at the code on your shopping cart, and we're going to contact them and harass them until they don't do business, until you go bankrupt, because we want to shut your speech down. Oh, but it's not censorship. And we're going to work with authoritarians all over the world to do this. And then now, they're announcing that starting in California is a beta test, They've got a database of NRA members, and they're going to start, A, not letting you work in government, not letting you get government contracts. But then they're going to start taking your bank accounts, too. And I'm sure average Americans will just turn their gun in, right, and tear up your NRA membership and bow down because we shouldn't sue or protest or say no to the left and George Soros and his groups terrorizing everybody. We should just stick our thumbs in our mouths and get in a fetal position and urinate all over ourselves. Because, see, they demonized me for a couple of years. They didn't put me in hundreds of thousands of articles on every TV show and have HBO shows and Showtime shows with characters based on me that were horrible people. They didn't do that because I was that important. They chose me because I was big and prolific to destroy
And then once they did that, no one is even going to cover it when it happens to you. Now, our audience understood this, and they got involved, and they were upset. But you need to call Congress. You need to go to your state reps' offices. You need to go everywhere and come in with the NRA, CBS News, members being harassed, and Democrats using databases and doxing people, and Congress being harassed and being doxed by the Democrats, and the thousands of conservative sites being banned, and the Democrats working in concert. And understand, we have to have the political will to say no to these criminals or they're never going to back down because they take our acquiescence as a green light to rape the living snot out of all of us. There's a plan afoot to remove Nancy Pelosi and raise $100 million for a particular Florida congressman to push to be the leader of the Democratic Party in the House. We want to sow dissension into that, and we want to blow this wide open. Uh, that walking mummy, crypt keeper, Pelosi, is a demon from hell. But the person trying to replace her is a total anti-gun, anti-free speech monster who's called for us to be politically silenced and is a complete liar. Uh, and so we want to keep her up there as long as possible. Hillary, too. I'm so glad she plans to steal the nomination again. Uh, and uh, I mean, I'm not glad she's a criminal, but I'm glad it's her because people know how bad she is. In fact, there's an article out today on Infowars.com from Politico. Top Democrats say Hillary Clinton has the stench of death for the Democratic Party. And they talk about how she stinks like a rotting pile of corpses. Who introduced that idea? It's well known that Hillary has such hatred for people that FBI agents and Secret Service that have worked around her say she routinely smells like a rotting fish. And I've had Bill Clinton's former girlfriend on that knew her before Hillary took over, said she's, when she first met her, she totally stunk because psychopaths, Mao Zedong never bathed. And he had sex with like nine women a day, reportedly. But, but the issue is he did it on purpose because he didn't care about you. Hillary Clinton viewed as kiss of death for Democratic candidates. Democrats don't want her to campaign for them because everywhere she goes carries the stench of death. Politico, Breitbart. See, next year's news today. We even have that intro video. Let's pull it in, Eric, next hour. Ooh, that smell. Maybe at the start of the next segment, that little no man's land right at the start of the hour. Kiss of death. Uh, I want to get into the Democrats and the weird psyops they run because everyone knows that the Democrats are selling incredible violence, political violence, bullying, aggressiveness, economic warfare, marching in women who all the witnesses say are lying. None of the witnesses can co corroborate any of it. saying that Kavanaugh raped him or Kavanaugh did this on a boat or this person did that and it all turns out to not be true. So what do you do when you've been so nasty and Trump's calling you out as an angry mob? Well, you start saying, we've been so nice. We've been wearing gloves. We have just been a bunch of pansies. And... You know, but we're going to have to get nasty now. See, oh, we weren't nasty, but now we are. It's like saying, the, you know, the devil says, well, I wasn't Lucifer, but I am now. There's Trump's tweet. You don't hand matches to an arsonist, and you don't give power to an angry left-wing mob. Democrats have become too extreme and too dangerous to govern. Republicans have to believe in the rule of law, not the raw rule of the mob. Vote Republican. Suddenly can't read these days, but that's fine because we're in such strange times. Let me read that again. Let me read that again. We don't really understand what we're dealing with here, do we? No, I don't think we do. And it's just the sheer magnitude of how much trouble we're in makes me just get, get angry because it's just gone way too far. Let me try this again and see how it goes. 
you don't hand matches to an arsonist and you don't give power to an angry left-wing mob. Democrats have become too extreme and too dangerous to govern. Republicans believe in the rule of law, not the rule of the mob. Vote Republican. Well, it's beyond that. It's beyond that. The Democrats sold out to the communist Chinese and so did a lot of blue-blood Republicans. And Trump is a populist insurgency led by Infowars that we built the platform for so that we could challenge their treason. And they can't deal with that. But the Democrats are an angry mob of criminals. We've all witnessed it. They're an angry mob of censors and bullies. And they're an angry mob of hypocrites. So there's a big New York Times article out titled, Michelle Obama wanted Democrats to go high. Now, they aren't so sure. And it's got the clip of the former attorney general, Eric Holder, saying we don't go high when they go low. We kick them, kick them, kick them, fight, fight, fight. And so that's where they're going. They are the people that are lowering and debasing the culture and the society. And now that they've gone so low, they want to turn that around and act like we are the ones that are going low. When they're the ones trying to demoralize everybody, they're the people that are incredibly corrupt. They're the people that are absolutely dedicated on selling the nation out and who, when we say America is going to be great again, they say America has never been great. How many top Democrats have said that? Not just the governor of New York, a bunch of them. You know, we project onto the Democrats because they're telling us how bad we are all day, that they must be better than us. No, they're not. They're the most corrupt, out of control people and every city they control has the biggest ratio between rich and poor. So here's Trump saying Democrats are an angry mob. Republicans believe in the rule of law, not the rule of the mob. That's what it is, it's a mob. The people of Ohio can save America from radical Democrats. They become radicalized. I mean, Pocahontas, Elizabeth Warren, seriously. No, no, seriously. She's becoming mainstream. You believe that one? You now have a champion fighting for you in the White House. But I need your help this election day, November 6th, to stop the radical Democrat mob from trying to take it away. You don't give power to an angry left-wing mob. If you allow the wrong people to get into office, things could change. They could change and they could change fast. And we're not going to let that happen. We can't let that happen. It could go very quickly. It can change very fast. We can't let that happen. You don't hand matches to an arsonist, and you don't give power to an angry left-wing mob, and that's what they've become. That's right. In fact, you stand up against them, and at the end of this hour, here's your chance to stand up against them. You've seen PayPal as our payment processor say he didn't violate terms of service. We, for moral reasons, because he's calling for violence against the press, they don't show one shred of it, we are cutting him off. And then we had backups. So then they go scan the cut on the site and they begin harassing them to do that. That's in the news uh, right now. Is Visa subsidiary Alex Jones's last refuge? No, but I will tell the folks doing this, you've got my attention. So I want to just let the different Democrat groups that are listed there know, okay, you want to be sued by high-powered law firms? You got it. Because it's not just like going and kicking me off Twitter or Facebook and saying, oh, that's a third-party thing. When you start scanning code and finding and trying to stop customers from buying books or videos or supplements and, and try to harass companies to, to not let people process money and you target each one, that's racketeering. That's a cartel operation. And so you're not going to cease and desist. I know you know Soros is going to back you, but at least in discovery and everything, we're going to get all the information and, 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 and be able to deal with this. Plus, you've got some of these groups saying, 
I'm jealous of Jones. I don't like the fact he's number one. Let's get together and take him down. And then you go call it a civil rights move. And then go, oh, he's a white supremacist. Take him down. Man, that's defamation on its face. Meant to destroy me, which is malice of forethought with intent to do harm. So it'll be a long, hard road, but you got my attention. So <laughs> I'll sue you all. Just get ready. Now, what I need from listeners is... Now, we're going to be joined by Zachary Lee Claywon here, who's been calling in for over a year and a half of the show, said a lot of really accurate stuff that came out to be true about Las Vegas being Saudi connected. That tied into what the hostage rescue team had told me separately, which we broke the day after that it was Islamic. Al-Qaeda took uh, credit for it. But he wants to go ahead and release his name. Uh, you know, he's worked with a lot of folks. And obviously he's tied in with uh, Musk and, of course, West. And, and, and he you know, said on air about six months ago, you'll see Kanye come out and talk about Trump and Alex Jones being culture uh, breakers, being, being, being matrix breakers. So, so, so that's happened. But regardless, I started trying to find out what had happened with this Khashoggi, uh, this one of the top journalists in Saudi Arabia who'd been exposing government involvement in 9-11, you name it. So a good guy overall. It took about a week to figure out what was going on. And I made a lot of phone calls to folks that obviously aren't going to be coming on the show. And they basically told me Thursday and Friday the same thing that Claywon told me last night. Because I asked him on Friday, do you know what's going on? He said, no, not really yet. Just internal Civil War type stuff. But then he had a chance to go play golf with some folks that are very high up. And they gave him their take on this. Uh, so this is important enough. Because we're like, oh, who cares about Saudi Arabia or Iran? Well, it's all about a war between those two groups. And now it could spill out. It's about Trump wanting peace in the area. And it's basically a false flag by deep state and the Obama-oids and the Clintonoids to try to stop the larger deal that Trump was trying to set up that will also lead to a two-state solution in Israel, which is the only real deal that's going to be offered and which Palestinians should accept. So uh, Zachary Lee Claywon was in the U.S. Army station at Fort Hood, Texas, and was a Muslim up until the age of 23 or so when he came to realization that it was truly was that was being used and weaponized. And he was uh, a part of a very interesting and public psyop regarding Islam within the ranks around the time of the Fort Hood shooting. He was there in the middle of that. Once he realized what he was being used for and groomed for, he did his own research into Islam and came to the realization that he did not want to be part of of this has started whistleblowing the issues and worked with Army Intel and a few other groups in the Intel world and at CENTCOM where he finished out his duties and received an honorable discharge from the Army. President day Zach is an avid patriot researcher currently writing a book on his ordeal about how it was being used against our country uh, and most of the world, how Islam is being used and more. He's uh, also a frequent caller into the show, facebook.com forward slash Rambo dot Zach. Z-A-Q. So he joins us for this segment, the next, and part of the next. Then Roger Stone joins us with huge breaking news uh, on a big battle the Democrats are about to have in their own ranks with Nancy Pelosi and Mr. Deutsch, our good friend that wants us banned off the Internet. He's already gotten part of what he wants from Florida, that little fraudster. So I'll be glad to uh, shoot a torpedo into his pudding pie coming up. Dem Congressman pressures Facebook to ban InfoWars during live hearing. That was back in July. Seems like a long time ago. Here we are in October, and we got banned off all those places. Uh, but, uh, Zach, Zachary, we really appreciate your courage. Let's just get right into because what you told me last night and this morning is exactly what my other sources, who are well-known people, but they don't want to be quoted on this, so I won't go there. This is exactly but very, very prominent people are looking at. So, Zachary, uh, the, the, the information you got is exactly what I got from my sources, but I guess you played golf with your sources. So tell us tell us about the players, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, uh, Iran, and what's really going on here, because this is a big deal. We will, we will get right into it, but first and foremost, I would just like to salute Salute General Mattis. Um, I have to salute General Mattis because he's left flanking them. Um, he is a patriot, and what's going on behind the scenes might uh, catch some liberals and some other individuals flat footed. Uh, with that being said, um, the Jamal Ahmed uh, Kashoggi murder at the consulate 
in Istanbul was an inside job. It was forcing Trump's position with the Saudis that was recently made in the kingdom in a last-ditch effort to cover up the true crimes of collusion dating back specifically to 9-11. This was not done in Riyadh. This was not done in Saudi Arabia. Arabia. This was not done by 15 Saudis. This was done in a consulate in Istanbul in Turkey. Okay? This was a Washington Post reporter. He was killed in the confines of Turkey. In the same Turkey that Aragon runs. Oh, you mean Aragon. The same Aragon that walked out on Trump's UN speech. The same Aragon that equals the UE. The same Aragon that has zero respect for the new world order that is America redefining what should be the legitimate order in this world. That's what's really going on. Sure, it's a battle over world order. This is an inside job. Well, that's pretty clear job. the this way the been... media is all hyping it and blaming Trump. And he goes in with his, his, his Apple Watch recording. And he supposedly gets killed, and Saudi Arabia is saying it's fake news. And I'm not defending Saudi not Arabia. Not Saudi Arabia. It was it was in Istanbul. It was in it was in Istanbul. No, no, I know it. No, I know what happened in Turkey. I'm, I'm saying it's being blamed on Saudi Arabia. Exactly, and they're blaming the crown prince. They're blaming Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. Let me say it one more time: Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. He's a 33-year-old crown prince that they are pushing to the limit. He's cleaning up that country because that country is despicable. That country has had some major problems, and he's made it clear that he's going to clean it up. So what better thing to do than just throw a wrench into the works? Oh, yeah, you killed this guy. Get out of here. Get out of here. It's sabotage. It's a problem. Uh, it has a lot to do with the midterm elections. Um, we're not happy about it. We're really not happy about it. What could be said about um, Jamal Ahmed uh, Khashoggi that hasn't already been said about uh, Seth Rich? It's 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 a big problem. The story he was working on proves the motivation. These these are the type of stories that gets Infowars deplatformed. This is serious. This is very serious. They bury it, and everything's sensational, and they do it on the weekend. That's right. They had removed the videos of you on the show before they banned the YouTube channel. They wanted that off when you exposed the Saudi Arabian connection to Vegas, the, the, the civil war within Saudi Arabia. So let's come back and talk about the Seth Rich-type parallels of major whistleblowers being killed, and then you blame that on Trump, and the tell is... If Trump doesn't attack Saudi Arabia or do all this, you know, he's complicit in this. And then there's no proof of who really killed this guy when U.S. corporate media is telling us that it was Saudi Arabia. And remember, without you moving the ball down the field, without you telling friends and family and sharing the live links on your Twitter and your Facebook and your YouTube or on your own email or by word of mouth, we get shut down. Quite frankly... Our audience got bigger with the bands. Uh, the hardcore audience did. People coming to us got three, four times bigger. We had a huge outreach to new people, but most of them were just kind of passers-by. But the hardcore audience is bigger. I'd rather have it the other way where we can reach new people, but you're still reaching new people. So without you, InfoWars fails. We are in your hands. So thank you all for your support, your prayers, everything. So Zachary Lee Claywan. Uh, hasn't gotten into all of his background. Prominent family in Morocco, really smart guy. I know some of the inside baseball at Fort Hood, and the things that really went on there in the PSYOP, that they discovered why Obama wouldn't call that an Islamic attack for four years. Uh, but just recapping what you said to me last night and then this morning, because it was exactly what I was told by other big sources, you know, that are high level that obviously can't come on the show, because you were repeating it about the Democrats and the Chinese and how clear it is and uh, divide and conquer. You either conquer or you divide and approximate what you said in that five-minute conversation we had last night because you, you called me late and I was in bed and I took the call of my wife sitting there and then I said, I, gotta, I said, great, come on tomorrow. Because what you said was beautiful and encapsulated my own research, but also people notice I didn't comment on this, this, this dead journalist being the top story the last week. So I was trying to figure out what was going on. But when I finally talked to high-level sources, they said exactly what you said about this whole 
Khashoggi situation. So recap in your own words what you said to me last night about the big picture, 35,000 feet, and let's zoom in to point blank range. I, I will say that, but and right before that, I'm going to say this, and this might be kind of uh, frivolous, but I'm going to say it. Um, Barack Obama, he says he has two words, predator drone. I have two words for you, info wars. And <laughs> I'm going to leave it right there. You could clip it. People could do whatever they want with that. Um, what we have occurring at the consulate in Turkey is the equivalent to what occurred to Seth Rich, without question, unequivocally. Um, what we have is a pressuring on Donald Trump because what Donald Trump has done is align himself with the Souths in a new crown prince um, in a sort of reforming of the Middle East, a sort of reforming of moderate Islam um, to kind of slow things down, to kind of get things on track, which I think is appropriate, which I think is very important because what we have not seen, as we've seen in the Barack Hussein presidency, is incredible wars across the Middle East, incredible firefights, incredible just EOD attacks and incredible, you know, all of this stuff. Because it was self-inflicted and it was – I'm not even getting into the CIA aspect of it, but it was very self-inflicted and obviously we're neutralizing it. But what we have is Trump. Trump is stopping the globalist, global destabilization plan to flood Europe and, and, the, and the rest of the world with radical Islamists. And, he's, and he, has sold, he has sold the Saudis $110 billion worth of Raytheon and Boeing equipment. Okay. That's fine. That's good if they're a legitimate ally, and they are a legitimate ally because the legitimacy has changed. The sure, we saw all the reforms, the women being able to drive, women not being killed for no reason. So we saw the reforms no, come. No, no. Obviously, the left doesn't no, want no, that. No, so, no. So, so how do you set that up? What nobody saw was people strung up by their feet in a Rich Carlton. That's what nobody saw. That country changed. I'm going to tell you right now, that country changed. And there's a legitimate reform there. But the idea of criticizing and doing things there right now is very strategic. And it's, it was a good play, but it's, it's dangerous. You've, you've killed a journalist, which is very dangerous because the story he was working on motivation-wise is um, it's problematic. Because he was exposing something that I think a lot of people want to know. I think a lot of people want to see. I think a lot of people want to understand what's going on in that part of the world and when you kill somebody and you blame it on a government it's so problematic you didn't blame it on yemen you didn't blame it on morocco you, you blamed it on the sole provider of uh defense buying uh capability in, in the world you, you 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 blamed it on the saudis you blamed it on the saudis they just bought 110 billion dollars and stuff and you blamed them oh they, they followed him in there and they killed him. Come on. Let's just stop right here right now. It was not in Saudi Arabia. And, and the media would have you think it was in Saudi Arabia and that Saudi he's killed him. It was in Istanbul, to be clear. It was in a consulate, to be clear. And the DNC, Clinton Cabal, killed that individual like they killed South Rich. And I would put my life on it. And if you want to come after me, I got hitters with me. But, well, let's just get, um, pull back from that because you, 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 you've talked to a lot of folks who I know as well, and, and, and they're the it's, ones. It's the, obvious. It's obvious. There's no Saudis in Istanbul killing anybody. That's not that you say. For what? For, for, for who? Well, it's pretty clear, just like, just like Kavanaugh, when they say he's guilty and he's raped all these women and then it's proven not to be true, we're just told by CNN that Khashoggi got killed by Saudi Arabia in Turkey, our big arch enemy now, and we're all just supposed to believe it, and now all Trump's deals are supposed to be over, and now if Trump doesn't shut down Saudi Arabia or have regime change, he's involved killing journalists. Yes, there's been no judge, no jury, no conviction, no proof, no arrest. This whole rush to judgment is like babies in incubators, 1990, having their brains bashed out to go to war with Iraq, and none of it was true. I get it. I see yeah. the scripting. And, and, and guess what? I'm planning a big event. I have celebrities. I have reach. It's going to happen. And if you think you're going to reach out to me, if you think you're going to touch me, you're not going to do nothing. I'm in Marrakesh. If you want to come find me, come find me. The people who you want to kill me like me more than you. You're not going to do it. 
God is great, you're not going to do a thing. You're not going to do anything. Well, I will say, people, people say, who, 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 who's Zachary Lee uh, uh, Clay? You're not going to do nothing. But, but I'll say this. I, I've talked to some of the sources that have talked to you. I know you are talking to Kanye and talking to Elon and friends with these folks. And so the stuff you've said has all come true. And I've talked to some of the other folks. So they say you're a good guy. And I appreciate you coming on air to talk about this. Most people won't come on who are high-level officers and stuff because they've obviously been threatened. But they get authorized to come on the air and talk about this. And I'm not saying that Mattis is bad. I get what you're saying is this is going to be a psyop that Trump's running. But why would Trump suddenly say, oh, he's Mattis. kind of a Democrat. He may be leaving. You know who else was a Democrat? Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Listen, I think these people are going to be flat-footed after the midterms. They don't know what they're dealing with. I ran to take over the Middle East. All of this just fits perfectly into their whole destabilization program. So we'll continue to look at every single angle of this as it unfolds. Now, look, I could spend an entire show on this, and maybe I should. Maybe that's the answer, instead of just barely getting into it. But I want to go to Roger Stone right now. But here's an article uh, from Right Wing Watch, People for the American Way, 90% funded by George Soros, the Nazi collaborator, is Visa subsidiary Alex Jones's last refuge? Well, it's not, but it doesn't matter. If they've taken five payment processors with harassment and threats, I have to sue these groups. The Sleeping Giant group, the Color of Change run by Van Jones, and this group. Because I've got to get, because it is racketeering, they're all working in concert to lie about who I am and then organize to deny me access to the market. It's beyond tortoise interference. So this is what they do. And I'm not going to just sit there and continue to get another payment processor. There's like a 500 of them. I'm going to sue you. And I'm not happy about it, but it's got to be big and huge litigation with attack dog lawyers to get the depositions and to get everything. Because, folks, I told you, that when they were done banning me off major platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Google, and Google doesn't really ban me, they just put the negative stuff on top, that they would then move on to you. And here it is, Washington Post, you name it, Facebook purge. Facebook purges 800 U.S. accounts and pages for pushing political spam, Washington Post. Michelle Malkin, Press for Truth, you know. Roofs with hundreds of thousands, millions of followers. They just call it spam now. Oh, conservatives, you have no place on the Internet. It's concerted. And the articles admit they work with Twitter to ban the same accounts the same day because they want you gone everywhere. Because Twitter says to Facebook, well, we make a lot of money off these accounts. You're going to kick the, them off. Well, we'll do it too. Okay, let's jump off the bridge together. So people say, oh, Alex, how you doing on the street? I'm doing okay. It's America that's in trouble. Quite frankly, I'm in need of a long vacation. But America won't be here when I get back if we just, like, sleepwalk into this, this thing where, oh, let them take you off Google, Facebook, Twitter, and 90-plus other platforms and scan your website and find out the code you've got and, you know, threaten the developers of WordPress if they don't take you down. It's, it's, it's total organized crime driving us into ghettos and then into concentration camps. That's what this is. And I love how so many of these conservative sites didn't stand up for me. They're the ones getting banned now. And notice, there's no coverage. I was picked because they demonized me first. And they thought once you were done hearing about how I was banned, and once they ran it for months and months, you'd be sick of it later. And they were right. No one even cares now. See, I'm worried about everybody's freedom, not just mine. Because if you lose your freedom, I lose my freedom. So we have credit card processing at this point. And when they take one, we got to jack around and do a bunch of stuff and get another. And we've learned they're calling them all and threatening them and, doing all this and lying. The point is, if you want to get products and you want to support us, we have Christmas, we have Black Friday, and we have Cyber Monday all rolled into one. All the big three sales of the next two months are rolled into one because I've got a warehouse of these high-quality products like X2 that's selling out and Brain Force Plus that's selling out. This is the last run of X2 Survival Shield. 
T-shirts, books. This could be your last chance to get these for a while. God, who knows what they're about to pull. The order comes through. It's cleared. You get your order. There's no issue with the processing if they take it away uh, with you getting your order. The process is we get it. You get your order. But you got to act now on bodies, ultimate tumic formula, and 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 the amazing super blue fluoride-free, fortified with colloidal silver iodine toothpaste, and vitamin mineral fusion, and, and, and videos, and books, and T-shirts. It's all there. And they haven't been successful shutting us down, so they're telling you we're not going to let you go to InfoWarsStore.com and buy products. We're going to harass the credit card processors with the Democratic Party and George Soros, just like we're harass your kids and try to sexualize them, and just like we try to take crosses down off churches all over the world. These are a group of control freaks that must be met head on. And so, yeah, this is out of self-defense. I have to sue these groups. It, it's got to be done. And they can laugh all day. It's got to be real litigation with depositions and top lawyers and everything. And this could end them all. Because they admit in public they're coordinating with Soros and the Democrats and everything to, to, to deny people from the marketplace. So this is the fight. Somebody else ain't going to do it. I'm going to do it as an example to the president and Congress on how to take action. They're getting ready on the Internet censorship, but this is banking now saying it doesn't matter your credit's perfect. It doesn't matter you've been at a merchant account for 22 years. It doesn't matter you have a perfect record. Perfect. Nobody has that. We are going to shut you down everywhere and harass you and spy on you until you're closed down. Well, if it's where you want, it's where you get. So InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. Go there while you still can. Congressman Deutsch, back in July, wanted me banned off the Internet. He then lied about me in the hearing and said that I said nobody died at Parkland, the school shooting. One million dollar uh, reward if you can find me saying that. But he doesn't care. He's defrauding his constituents. He's a horrible person. He wants to ban conservatives off the Internet, which is now happening in mass. There's the article to see the full video. Dem Congressman pressures Facebook to ban InfoWars during a live hearing. Demands to know how many strikes it would take to bring down InfoWars. Well, don't worry. Thousands, it was 800 on Thursday, it's thousands now, of conservative and libertarian and pro-Trump sites on Facebook and Twitter were totally banned. They don't even do strikes now. They just say, your political spam, your speech out promoting the accomplishments of Trump and America and Republicans. The Democrats can call for violence. They can run around screaming and yelling. They can go crazy. They can they can say, go out and burn down Republican buildings. But you don't promote the economy at 4.8%. You don't promote Trump delivering on what he said. No, that's spam. <coughs> the big tech has decided. We'll get to that in part two of the discussion. But the time we have, Roger, let's get into Herr Deutsch here, Ted Deutsch. Uh, from right there where you live in Florida, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll play the clip in a moment, and what his uh, what the inside baseball is on what he's doing. Well, Alex, uh, Congressman Ted Deutsch, who, as you know, is a leader in the uh, effort to erase the Second Amendment and take away our firearms, uh, he has launched a quiet coup attempt to challenge Nancy Pelosi for the speakership in the event that the Democrats win the majority. Uh, his subterranean campaign consists of raising hundreds of thousands of dollars from major Democratic donors around the country, and then very carefully and strategically funneling that money only to Democratic candidates who will commit to Deutsch for the overthrow of Pelosi. Don't be shocked if this right now is the first time the speaker has heard of this, but my sources are impeccable because Deutsch has been leaning on major Democratic fundraisers here in the state of Florida to put up the cash for his attempted coup. And again, I like the rotten-brained, you know, kind of zombie Pelosi. She's a horrible America hater and a huge criminal. But the young, younger, more wicked, I mean, more of a devilishly trained Deutsch. I mean, we don't want him to get the power. So we want to make sure Pelosi knows all about this and his little coup d'etat. Well, I think the important thing for people to realize is that Ted Deutsch is not for the election of all Democrats. He's only for the election of House Democratic candidates 
who will commit to his overthrow attempt. Not only does this guy have one of the scroungiest beards that I've ever seen, but he is a hardcore opponent of the First Amendment. He despises free speech. You can see him trying to shout down Laura Loomer, which, let's face it, that's a hopeless task. But he is among the worst of the worst in terms of his extremism. He makes uh, Nancy Pelosi look like Barry Goldwater. He's so far out on the left wing. So the socialist wing of the Democratic Party, as personified by Ted Deutsch, is making their move. Uh, and I think it's important that Democrats need to know that not only is Deutsch not a team player, but he has a, a full-on takeover of the Democratic leadership on his mind. Now, whether Deutsch would proceed with his plan and try to take out Pelosi as minority leader, or whether he's just committed to her overthrow in a speaker's contest, is not clear to me. Uh, and, 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 and he may just be doing what the porn lawyer is doing, where he's claiming this to collect $100 million. Well, it's possible. But uh, the, the two different fundraisers who told me this both told me that it was very much on the down low, that it was very much hush hush, and that Deutsch did not want it around Washington or around the country that this was what he's up to. He's trying to pick up IOUs from Democratic candidates. But I'm also told that he is arm twisting up front for commitments in the event that there is a leadership fight. So there are fissures in the Democratic Party. Personally, I think they are counting their chickens uh, before uh, they are hatched. On the other hand, Alex, I don't think many have thought through the political implications of the death, of the, the extraordinary devastation of a hurricane in Florida, which has hurt the most conservative part of the state. The northern panhandle, while it still probably has a majority of registered Democrats by registration, is habitually probably the most Republican part. Sure, of could the state. that could that throw the state uh, to the Democrats? Most certainly, it is a major problem, and I don't know how you deal with it. The devastation, the photos that people have sent me, what I've heard from Congressman Matt Gates, who represents this district, uh, this looks like Dresden after World War II. It is extraordinary. Uh, even if you could put up temporary polling places, the populace has moved out and moved on. There's no place for them to sleep. There's no fresh water. There's no food. There's no gasoline. So the most conservative part of the state needs to be taken out of the equation. There is no question that this can affect the election for governor, the election uh, for uh, the U.S. Senate, and, of course, the other statewide offices, agriculture commissioner, CFO, attorney general, and so on. It is a but real... conservatives are tenacious. I mean, they're going to go find a place to poll, but if they don't get to, this should be a major issue to set up the emergency polling places. I mean, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, if they have to move into other counties, how do they do it? Well, remember that this also in Florida, a majority of the voters are cast either in advance through absentee ballots or through extensive uh, early voting. That's the good news as the Republicans figure out how to salvage this situation. But it, without any question, has real implications for our coming election. The other thing I got to mention, Alex, that I really have to talk about, I went out yesterday for an extraordinarily long run. I ran further than I normally do. Last night, my legs, my calves, my thighs were killing me. I popped three bodies, the turmeric formula available at Impores.com. This stuff is a is a miracle supplement. It really is extraordinary. It's 95 it percent curcuminoid. My wife had a huge hip pain. She plays tennis, and it went away with this when drugs weren't working. And people better order it right now. Roger, as you know, they're trying to take our payment processors. They've taken five. I got some backups. Then they hone in on what they think's the last one. I mean, they are like, I have to sue them. I mean, I'm not even happy about this. I, I This is literally like Nazi Germany. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, illegal. It's antitrust. It's racketeering. Uh, what you need, Alex, are some real junkyard lawyers to go after these people. What they're doing is illegal. It's in. Uh, I think we do. I need to get on the. I think we do have some former U.S. attorneys, don't we? We're, we just need to do that. No, it's it, look. It, these people have picked a fight, and they bit off more than they can chew. Uh, and it is time, Jared Hole, Oliver Dorsey, and these other frauds. They're the ones running a racketeering conspiracy, and they should be charged. They should. Well, be the fact that they collude together to deny people from the full marketplace of ideas and commerce, and then defame you while they do it. But see, they're just, uh, I agree with you, though. What are the Democrats going to do 
if their blue wave turns into nothing, which all the numbers show looks like 70% chance Republicans keep the House and Senate. What are they going to do when they lose? Well, I would make two points. One, this giant takedown at Facebook is extraordinary. Liberty One, which re rebroadcasts much of the programming of InfoWars. They've been real champions against the censorship of InfoWars. Gone. Absolutely decimated. Gone. Uh, many, many other solid conservative, libertarian, and pro-freedom Yeah, no, it's, it's massive. No one's even getting attention. That's what makes me upset. But it's because of the election. They're doing it now because of the election. Which They're is election it. meddling. It's silencing American speech. It's a whole nother level of legal action because it violates the Federal Election Commission's uh, guarantees for free access uh, during the elections. I think they have bid off more than they can chew. It's in-kind but... donations to the Democrats. Every time they block hundreds of millions of people from being able to talk online, that is an in-kind donation to Democrats when they let them talk as much as they want. Real quick, uh, 30 seconds. Say... Mattis. Yeah. Trump saying Mattis is a Democrat may be gone. Well, Mattis voted for Hillary Clinton. He was part of a military group for Hillary Clinton. Uh, Jack Posobiec has, I think, authoritatively reported that Mattis has been nursing presidential ambitions of his own. I think Mad Dog is not long for the Trump cabinet. And, of course, Nikki Haley's been a big globalist, right? She has, uh, and we still don't know the real story there, although my sources in South Carolina tell me that it is a possibility that Lindsey Graham may be moving over to become attorney general, whereupon Republican Governor Henry McMaster, a truly great man, an early Trump supporter, would appoint Haley. Come on to tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central. This is huge. Tomorrow's news today. Whatever you do, folks, InfoWarsStore.com. Your financial support is critical. Take action while you still can.